Ogani Oloretade is an editor at TechCabal. He joins us now to discuss digital economy in Africa, just as the 79th UN General Assembly wraps in style. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, Ogani. Now, you saw the vice president, of course, representing us there, talking about how digitization is needed for the growth of our economy. I'd like you to respond to that first. Uh, I think it's a very good call from the vice president. He shows that uh, there's a level of consciousness on the end of the government. It's a critical statement uh, because if we consider the growth of Nigeria's digital economy in particular over the last decade, and, the project, and also the projected growth of, of reaching 18.3 billion uh, US dollars by 2026. When we look at all of these numbers, it shows us that there's a lot of potential in that industry, but of course there are still challenges, and it's very critical that uh, policymakers, particularly the government, uh, are very conscious of what these problems are, and they are willing to make efforts to address them. So he talks about barriers to the growth of Nigeria's digital economy and uh, tech ecosystem, you know, uh, generally. But uh, what are those barriers, if you can elaborate on that? Yeah, so uh, very importantly, uh, we talk about infrastructure. So when we talk of infrastructure, we talk about broadband connectivity. We talk about uh, access to reliable internet. Uh, then we talk about government regulations, of course. Uh, even though on that hand, we've seen like a significant shift uh, because uh, in, the, in the past, decade, mm. we've seen a major shift in stance in terms of how the government thinks about policy. Just recently, we saw the issuance of the first set of crypto licenses. Yeah. Uh, we have the startup hacks, we have the data economy bill. And, and, but obviously, there's still like a lot of opportunity for government to understand what, uh, that, what, what that sector needs uh, to address those problems. And then we talk about, uh, you know, we talk about also, also, on, also on infrastructure, we talk about uh, lack of data centers. We don't have enough data centers in Nigeria. Mm. We talk about uh, cloud computing capacities. We talk about uh, what about taxes? Uh, you know, there's just a lot. We talk about the talent gap, for instance, in the ecosystem. Uh, we don't have enough uh, talented people to work to drive the kind of innovation we're looking at. And even the ones that we have, they're leaving the country. So mm -hmm. these are very critical problems that requires you know the intervention of all of the stakeholders, particularly the government as well. Mm -hmm. Really deep-rooted problems. But let's look at ways of mitigating them. For instance, one key problem is accessibility to the internet. We know that that has been a big issue when it comes to you know uh, getting digital in Nigeria. Let's talk about how to mitigate all of those challenges. And of course, uh, you've seen we've seen different conferences: the UN conference, now the Moon short conference, what role do they play in helping us deal with all of these challenges? Uh, I would say that uh, it's very important that we have conversations around these problems. We know they exist for all of the critical stakeholders. Uh, we talk about innovators, we talk about uh, founders, we talk about venture capitalists, we talk about even the government themselves. They are aware of these problems. So the essence of conferences like Moonshot is to bring together these players to discuss what these problems are and to find lasting solutions to them. So it's very important to not just talk about those problems, to profile solutions to them, because there's a lot of emphasis on talk, talk, talk. We talk a lot. Mm. Uh, but <laughs> it's very important that we are able to define what those solutions are, and all, everybody, every critical stakeholder involved in the ecosystem can look for ways that they can contribute their part to solving those problems. So are there plans to impact policy making? You know, we talk about uh, the prospect of uh, talk shops. So are there plans to impact policy making at this uh, moonshot uh, conference, you think? Yeah, so at, at TechAbao, uh, over the last decade, we've covered uh, the business of technology and innovation in Africa, and we recognize the place of regulation in, in all of this, because there is no innovation without regulation. Yep. Um, a second government policy can shut down an entire ecosystem, and that's why for Moonshot this year, we've had uh, a, a new content track that focuses on policy and regulation, where we'll be inviting yeah. policymakers to engage directly with uh, innovators uh, to understand what is really happening, because there's often like a bit of a mismatch in how they perceive what innovation is. So the, for the innovator, you're, you're working on something that potentially would disrupt uh, the ecosystem. But for the policymaker, they might be seeing something else completely. Uh, so it's very important that there's an opportunity for them to meet and talk and understand what the different pain points are and how we can work together to you know, drive the future of the ecosystem. And how do you intend to communicate or pass down all of these to the government? Because as you said, you could have a lot of beautiful plans on paper, but one policy from the government could shut down and clear off all of those you know, plans. How do you intend to communicate and ensure that all of these thoughts are actioned? 
And, and that's why we're having a roundtable. So the essence of the roundtable is to have policymakers on one side, to have innovators on one side, where they directly engage and they talk about what those problems are for the for digital economy and also for the tech ecosystem and how we can possibly address those problems. Um, they've, and, so to, and admittedly, they've been like a major shift in terms of even how innovators re, you know, relate with the regulators. A Nigerian Startup Act, for instance, is a product of collaboration between the ecosystem and, and, and policymakers. Uh, so that has happened before. It shows that there's an opportunity for much more collaboration to happen. We've seen what happened with the issuance of the crypto licenses, and we expect to see more of that. And for us at, at TC and at Moonshot, what we would be doing is we're bringing these people together to talk to understand what's the pain point of the government, what's the pain point of the innovator, and what can we do to solve you know, our collective problems and how we can unlock opportunities for everybody, because that's the end goal. All right, Agani. Um, you know, I'm looking at digital economy and, uh, of course, the tech ecosystem. You know, if we look at where we're coming from, it's, we're still more at its infancy in this part of the world. Um, you know, realistic, I'm being realistic now. So uh, what are the prospects of leapfrogging to serve our own individual needs. Yes, we know what the West have done and whether the East have done with their uh, digital economy as it were. But uh, instead of copying, trying to copy their ways of uh, doing things, can we uh, have this homegrown you know, tech evolution that fits our needs uh, regarding uh, going forward, as you well, think? I mm. think that tech evolution already exists okay. uh, because we're building homegrown solutions. Uh, because if we look at startups, for instance, uh, fintechs, that are unlocking uh, access to financial inclusion, we're seeing that these problems, these solutions rather, are built with local peculiarities in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, so but you understand? I'm, you I'm, I, because you know, when, when you talked about uh, not having enough uh, trainable hands to actually handle professionals regarding this, uh, what can we do in that uh, aspect, you think? Some of them, as you said, are leaving all the countries, the few ones that we've trained, you know, that have already been trained. So, you know. Yeah, so I mean, for, to address the issue of the talent gap, there's mm -hmm. need for collaboration. And yeah. it's time that we need to create a pipeline of talent. Mm -hmm. And it means we have to train people with digital skills. Uh, we have to be able to provide opportunities for these people. Uh, I know that the, the Ministry of Communication, Innovation, and Data Economy mm -hmm. has a, a, a technical training that is ongoing. Okay. Uh, that's part of it. I know there are also other private organizations that you know, train people in digital skills in silos, but it requires collective effort, really. Everybody has to play their part. Good. Now, looking at brain drain, which is one big issue in every sector, especially the service sector, which, of course, uh, technology falls into. If you try to assess the challenges that are causing our, you know, beautiful and most talented minds to leave the country, how would you say that the government is uh, poised, you know, to address all of this challenge, especially looking at the tech space? Do you think that we're showing that uh, determination or that willingness to deal with the challenge, especially in the tech space? That's a very tricky question. Uh, I would say that uh, the brain drain that we have, it's a reflection of the microeconomics, right? It's a, rec it's a reflection of the fundamental problems that exist. Um, the economy, we look at the economy, we look at inflation, we look at cost of living. These are the major factors why people are living, because people are living inside of better opportunities. If we're able to unlock those opportunities for people locally here, yeah, they, they probably no, they would not exactly have the incentive to want to leave Nigeria. So it still falls back to government addressing the basics. So how do we unlock? economic you know, prosperity for people? How do we create jobs for people? Yeah. How do we create access to internet connectivity? How do we support innovators? How do we support people that are building and are solving problems for our people? I think uh, it, you'll just see that it still comes back to the government, you know, just looking at what these issues are and looking for different ways to address them. Very good, uh, Gani. Despite all these uh, issues we've been having, um, what do you think is the immediate impact of uh, digital penetration? Uh, is having on the socioeconomic status of developing countries like uh, Nigeria, you think? A lot. Um, when, we do, when we look at it from the context of innovation, um, we've been able to build very, very successful businesses, unicorns, out of this in market, regardless yeah. of what our problems are. We've been able to create access to financial inclusion, for instance. We've been able to unlock job opportunities, regardless of what the problems are. Uh, so we see that technology has the potential, technology is changing our world the way we see it. Yeah. And 
technology would also unlock more opportunities for us. And that's why it's always very important that at the end of the day, the conversation still would be how do we harness the power of technology mm. to drive you know, economic growth for our people? How do we you know, harness the power of technology to unlock our economic prosperity? So what is the role of the government in this? What is the role of the private sector in this? How do we collaborate? How do we you know, look for opportunities? How do we support people that are playing in these spaces too? really, really address these problems. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it's, it's, it's a win-win for everyone. Now we know that the youth are more, you know, if you look at the tech, or the tech sector, you see more of the youth there. And it appears that for a country like Nigeria, where our strength is our youth, we have about 70% of the population. Do you think that we are really leveraging on that advantage that we have as a largely populated a country that is, has a higher population of youth? Do you think we're leveraging on that to build our digital and technology uh, sector? To be frank, I don't think we're doing enough. Uh, and that's because, like you rightly pointed out, we have a huge population of young people. Uh, the question will now be, what opportunities are we creating for these people? How much of digital skills are we, are we empowering these people with? Right. And everything still revolves, you know, back to the government. Uh, you know, it's always very funny because at the center of all of this is what government can actually do. Mm -hmm. Because government will lead the charge, then we are going to have, you know, the private sector. Because if you really think about it, there's little, there's little impacts that a private individual, or private organizations can make yep. in actually addressing these problems. The government has to lead the charge. The government has to think of how do we harness, you know, the potential of young people, and you know that's why. For instance, digital skills training that's ongoing, the 3MTC program, it's, it's very important because we need to find a way to empower young people. We need to find a way to give them meaningfully engaged because if you don't do that, you, know, you won't be surprised that you're building a society of you know, criminals and all of that because people have to meaningfully engage mm. before you can say they shouldn't you know, involve in crime. So, and meaningfully engaging them will also mean you're locking economic prosperity for them. Yeah. Somebody learns the digital skills, they get a job for it, they're able to feed their family, they're able to you know, meet their own immediate needs, and you know, that's economic prosperity in that way. Then people are able to also build solutions that are solving problems. Right? We see how fintechs have been able to be different, different solutions yeah. that to, to help people, that even the person in the market can have access to the financial sector. These are you know, the very, very fundamental things that have to be as there. And you know, obviously, still the government has to do these things. You're, you know, you're right on, on that. Uh, it's all about creating the right environment uh, to thrive. And of course, uh, engagement with the tech community, uh, such as yourself, you know, regarding that. Um, I'd like to thank you, Gani. Uh, Oloro Tadi is a news editor. Uh, Tech Cabal, I'd like to thank you very much for coming to the show. Thank you very much for having me.